Hello friends, today we are going to learn about the selection of electrotherapy modality for pain relief. This is always question to all the clinicians, which modality is best for my patient. Because when any patient comes with complaint of pain, you will be having multiple choices of electrotherapy modalities. But definitely we cannot give all these modalities to our patient. We have to select one or two modalities out of this list of electrotherapy modalities. So in this lecture effort is done to identify the best modality for our patient for pain relief. Now here the selection of best modality is as difficult as to find out the correct road from this crossing clear but still the effort is made to make the idea more clearer. Now, for example, if the patient comes to me and complaining of knee pain, so what I will think, let me give shortwave diathermy, then again after thought of this shortwave diathermy, I might be having thought of microwave diathermy, that let me try microwave diathermy. Again, I will be thinking, why not IFT, that is interferential therapy, again, I will be having thinking, TENS may also work, so let me try TENS. Now, after that, again, I will be having option of ultrasound. Okay, so I will be having multiple thoughts for same patient having knee pain. So, what will happen? I will be confused. Okay, so why? Because I have multiple choices. Now, because of this, I am confused. So, definitely, my patient will also think that finally, which modality you are giving? So, my answer should be, I will go with evidences. The evidences means it should be research based conclusion or clinical decision. So what are these researches? So there are multiple comparisons. So first comparison it is shortwave diathermy versus pulse shortwave diathermy. So it has been found that pulse shortwave diathermy is more effective as compared to continuous shortwave diathermy and this study was done in back pain. You can see the reference also that is below this statement. In each slide you will be finding the reference. Okay, So if you want to uh, read in detail you can go through uh, this reference. Now second evidence. So whenever the comparison is made okay, among shortwave diathermy, interferential therapy and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. So what was the result? So result was telling combination of treatment of physical therapy agent agent means shortwave diathermy or IFT or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation along with exercise and education program as multidisciplinary intervention has the best outcome in patient with osteoarthritis of knee means whenever we have osteoarthritis knee patient we have to give any one of this that is SWD or IFT or TENS along with exercise as well as do's and don'ts program okay so that is ergonomics and other education program okay but statistically there was no difference that was found among TENS, IFT and shortwave diathermy means all these three were equally effective for pain relief now when the shortwave diathermy was compared with ultrasound so when the patients were given shortwave diathermy and ultrasound when they were suffering from osteoarthritis of knee okay so it was found that there was no significant difference between these two groups when they were compared to each other means again shortwave diathermy and ultrasound were equally effective for pain relief in the patient with osteoarthritis of knee now whenever there was comparison among shortwave diathermy and hot pack and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. So here the combination was given means hot pack with transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or shortwave diathermy means hot pack plus tense or hot pack plus shortwave diathermy. So they had best outcome in osteoarthritis knee patient. Now SWD versus US that is ultrasound versus phonophoresis. Phonophoresis means the drug is also given along with ultrasound. Most of the diclofenac is given. So again here also there was no significant difference between the three modalities in terms of efficacy when they were assessed on osteoarthritis knee patient. Means 
whether you give shortwave diathermy or only ultrasound or ultrasound with diclofenac all these three are equally effective now there was no research that proves uh, which is better out of shortwave diathermy and microwave diathermy but few uh, difference in terms of frequency and uh, other parameters they are given so in case of microwave diathermy you have a frequency that is 2456 and 915 for shortwave diathermy that you know it is from 10 to 100 megahertz generally it is 27.12 megahertz so in case of microwave heating will be because of electric field in shortwave heating will be because of magnetic field in microwave penetration of fat is only one third as compared to shortwave diathermy while in case of shortwave diathermy <coughs> it is more okay microwave diathermy can create hot spots but shortwave diathermy is unlikely to create hot spots in case of microwave diathermy spacing is required between skin and applicator shortwave diathermy you can apply directly to the skin also okay but there will be some clothing material or at least uh, you can use some bed sheet but in short they are in contact while the microwave diathermy it is not in contact with body okay in case of microwave diathermy metal cannot be within four feet of applicator in case of shortwave diathermy uh, it is the not hitting the metal as compared to microwave diathermy clear and other things are becoming obsolete in case of microwave diathermy and in case of uh, shortwave diathermy it is most commonly used in orthopedic conditions the reference is also given at the end of slide now shortwave diathermy versus infrared so definitely the shortwave diathermy is deep heating modality and uh, infrared it is superficial heating modality so shortwave diathermy has some better effect than infrared radiation but IRR that is infrared radiation is also effective to reduce the symptoms of patient with low back pain means a shortwave diathermy and infrared radiation both are effective but as compared to infrared radiation shortwave diathermy is having better effect now when we compare two currents so that is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and interferential therapy so it was found that transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and interferential current or interferential therapy were equally effective in chronic low back pain patient so there was no significant difference in the effects of them now ultrasound when it was compared with paraffin wax bath so the combination of ultrasound with wrist orthosis okay was more effective as compared to paraffin wax bath with wrist ortho <coughs> orthosis in case of carpal tunnel syndrome so ultrasound is better as compared to paraffin wax bath now when there is comparison between ultrasound and laser so when it was compared for lumbar discopathy so ultrasound was found more effective as compared to laser therapy so ultrasound is better than laser also now heat versus cold versus contrast bath so here it is always debatable for example if you tell that you apply cryotherapy so your patient may tell that so and so doctor has told me for heat therapy if you tell heat therapy then your patient may claim that so and so doctor has told me for cryotherapy so this is always debatable so we will learn few differences also but if we compare this heat versus cold versus contrast bath so pain reduction and improvement in coos coos is one of the scale that is used for osteoarthritis knee patient so when it was uh, uh, measured on coos at that time it was found that each treatment in osteoarthritis knee patient okay the responses were greater with preferred treatment preferred treatment means few patients may be more comfortable with heat therapy few patients may be more comfortable with cold therapy and few patients may be more comfortable with contrast bath now how to decide when to give hot therapy and when to give cold therapy okay definitely the patient's preference will be there but just patient preference will not be sufficient to decide the therapy we have to apply our uh, criticize also now cold treatment will reduce the inflammation by decreasing the blood flow 
okay so it is generally used for the acute condition so you apply within 48 hours after an injury and it also reduces your nerve conduction now heat treatment will promote the blood flow okay and it will also help the muscles to relax so mostly the heat therapy is useful for chronic pain heat therapy will be useful for stiffness relief also especially around the joints heat therapy and cryotherapy both are useful for pain relief okay both are useful for pain relief but based on patient's uh, duration of the injury whether it is chronic or acute okay depending on that as well as whether the patient is having stiffness or not based on that you have to decide which therapy you want to give to your patient hot or cold now alternating heat and cold may also help to reduce the exercise induced muscle spasm so that is nothing but contrast bath now the contrast bath it is not always taking two bowls and putting one uh, bowl having uh, cold water and another bowl is having hot water okay it's not always like that you can use two things simultaneously like for example you have heat heating pad as well as you have ice pack okay so for example if you are having pain on the knee joint on the medial side so you put the ice pack okay then again you put the heating pad again you put the ice pack again you put the heating pad okay so this is also contrast bath clear so definitely it will reduce muscle pain as well as muscle spasm now never use extreme heat and never put ice directly on the skin otherwise it is possible that because of too much heat there will be chance of burn as well as because of excessive cold you will be having chance of frostbite now how to conclude what i should do so first of all you see the patient's parameters there are multiple parameters those we need to consider but we are considering or we are taking example of one parameter for example area of treatment if the patient is having knee pain so only the medial side of the knee joint is aching so it is smaller area you can go with ultrasound okay if the area is larger for example back pain okay so definitely the back pain will be having uh, more area that is aching so in that case ultrasound head will not be sufficient to cover that area so you think of shortwave diathermy because the area is wider okay for example if the patient is having back pain plus radiculopathy so definitely in that case shortwave diathermy two pains will not be sufficient clear so you think of ift because you have to cover back as well as you have to cover lower limb also because the patient has lumbar radiculopathy clear so these are nothing but patient's parameters those you have to consider now another is therapist convenience so many times there will be problem of availability for example if we consider shortwave diathermy and microwave diathermy so microwave diathermy it is costlier as compared to shortwave diathermy if we think of laser so laser is also costlier clear so it is always the question of availability clear so again therapist will have to also think that which modality is available so based on patient's parameter and therapist convenience there should be selection of electrotherapy modality okay now different uh, penetration depths as per literature so for microwave diathermy penetration depth is 6 to 8 cm for phonophoresis it is 5 cm for simple ultrasound without diclofenac if we have 1 megahertz ultrasound so penetration depth will be 5 cm and if it is of 3 megahertz penetration depth is 2 cm in case of shortwave diathermy it can penetrate 2 to 3 cm or even more sometimes that is passing throughout the body part okay now if we think of hot packs heating pads paraffin wax bath infrared and fluidotherapy so hardly it will be uh, less than one centimeter and if we think of the different therapeutic currents like ift or tans so it depends on based on skin resistance like skin resistance is more penetration depth is less it depends on frequency also frequency is more so definitely resistance will be less okay and resistance less will cause more penetration depth so we can say that more the frequency more the penetration and electrode placements so if there is more spacing between two electrodes so penetration depth will be more why because there will be spreading of current and if the distance between two electrodes it is small so current will not spread much in that case penetration depth will be less this lecture is prepared from 
मेडिकल फिजियोलॉजी बाय के सेम्बुलिंगम इलेक्ट्रोथेरापी एक्सप्लेन बाय लोएन रेड देन अम्पैड न्यूरोलॉजिकल रिहेबिलिटेशन एंड फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोथेरापी एंड बायोमेडिकल फिजिक्स बाय मी दिस ऑल आर द एडिशनल रीडिंग लिंक्स यू कैन गो थ्रू दिस लिंक्स टू रीड फर्दर I hope that you have understood this lecture and it is not wasted. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you.